And this is Kim Kreitzer for Sons of American Legion Radio. And uh, today we are going to do uh, one of our favorite things, talk to a fellow uh, media reporter, and that is Brian Heyman, who is on the staff at Newsday in their sports department. Brian, good to see you. How are you doing? Doing very well, Ken. Good to see you, too. Great, great. Uh, things are slowly getting back to normal uh, in covering sports. Uh, um, fans are, are back in the stands across the board, uh, but they're still, it still is different. Uh, what's it been like for you? You've been out covering the Jets and Giants, um, Stony Brook football and, and, uh, a lot of high school activities. What's it been like for you out there covering sports this fall? Well, it's been, uh, it's not, it's not quite like the, uh, the olden days when we had, uh, in the olden days being you know, two years ago, um, when we had a locker room access, that's, you know, for me, for what I've covered, that has still not uh, come back. Um, uh, you know, a, a lot of it is still Zoom, and but some of it is now press conference rooms a, as well. And um, even, you know, I covered a, a few of Mets and Yankees games, uh, you know, during this season, uh, a lot of that was Zoom, especially post game. Um, but you know, if you've got a little sticker that said you're vaccinated and you put it on your little writer's card, you could go onto the field before the game and do in in person interviews. Um, so uh, you know, I covered New York Liberty um, women's uh, WNBA, sure. and you know, it was uh, a lot of it was Zoom and pregame. You know, you'd be sitting in the arena and, you know, the music is playing and uh, you're trying to hear what the coach is saying. Sometimes the Wi-Fi signal, even though you're in the same building at Barclays the Center, would go out and you'd hear like every other word. Um, they do shoot arounds by Zoom. So, like, I remember I asked um, one of the players a question and I'm pretty sure she gave me a good answer but I only heard a few words out of it and, and you're, you're out, of, out of luck there. With Stony Brook uh, football, for instance, we are doing post-game Zoom with the coach and they'll, they'll ask you, uh, what couple of players would you like to talk, talk to who are like stars of the game post-game? Uh, for basketball season, from what I understand, they're gonna go back to a, pr a press conference room. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not the same yet. Uh, it won't be the same until there's like the full locker room access uh, again. And hopefully that's coming someday. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure when, because I, I think that kind of, uh, you know, with the Zoom, it, it, it's, it's not the same, really. You're not getting that, that personal connection uh, or, or building up sort of relationships. And a lot of times the teams will pick uh, you know, players for you to, for you to talk to. And uh, so you, like uh, in real time after a game, maybe you won't get the person that you, you want to speak to about some key play or whatever. So, you know, it's different, but it, it's better than the alternative when we had no sports <laughs> a little while back. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's a bit challenging uh, covering West Point. We're not going to practice uh, all of the uh, media opportunities during the week are, are by Zoom as well as the post game. Uh, but we're up in the press box and that's a great place to be. To, uh, Army's having a great season. And uh, so it's different. Um, what's a little different for us is we try there to talk to as many of the younger players as possible. Um, you know, they're, they're not home very often. Um, so the parents just love seeing them in their high school and friend networks and we do very well with with that and uh, get a lot of feedback but you know maintaining our relationships is so important so that when you get on those big days and you got to ask questions after a big game maybe after a big loss the player or coach will have confidence in you uh, that they call on you and uh, they'll feel good about speaking with you how do you find you can maintain what what's it the importance of having a good relationship with the players and coaches that you cover? You know, I, I think it's very important uh, in the sense that uh, you, you, want, you want the athlete to be comfortable talking with you and to give you, uh, you know, candid answers. 
And, uh, you know, sometimes the way it is now, you know, you have that, that kind of wall up and, um, and it's a group thing. So you, you're, every, everyone is, is hearing the same material. So in that way, it's different. I think sometimes the professional athletes may, maybe like it the way it is now because it's not like uh, we're all charging into the locker room or, cl or clubhouse and there are just a few of them have to have to deal with us at a time. Yeah, that's uh, that's challenging. College sports, are, we haven't really seen that much locker room access uh, in uh, in a number of years, so, and not at West Point, uh, uh, where we cover everything is by either on the practice field or or uh, in a conference uh, room uh, kind of facility. Now you cover through all levels of of sports from high school to college, to the professionals, you cover the, you've covered the Jets and Giants this fall and you were covering the Mets and Yankees. How does it differ for you at, you know, one day you're going, you know, going out to cover high schools and talking to high school players and coaches versus going to colleges and, and to pros. How do you find that difference? Um, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I think one thing with, with actually with the high school coverage is that, you know, at a, say, I'm covering football, you know, right after the game, right up to the coach, right up to the players, right on the field, and you just talk to them, and it's like, like, no, no different uh, than before. Um, as, as far as the, the, the different level, I, you know, I have always liked the variety of dealing with different teams, different levels. So, you know, it, I, I'm not sure in a sense that there is that big of a difference. Uh, you might get some of the younger players who are, you know, more willing to just say what comes into their head. And some of the uh, veteran players are maybe more uh, protective uh, of their thoughts. Um, so I don't really know that, uh, that there, there's, you know, that big of a difference. I mean, the athletes are the athletes. They, they are going through their different levels of, of competition. Uh, but, you know, the, the games are the games. And we find uh, today, obviously, newspapers, uh, the industry is not what it was. Uh, I don't know when uh, the benchmark might be 15 years ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, now things have become digital. Uh, video is much more important. Uh, uh, you put your stories out uh, uh, on LinkedIn. That's great to see them uh, in that way. How is uh, distribution, how is just going digital uh, work for you? What are some of the ways that you are uh, covering teams uh, digitally? Well, I think it's just, um, you know, for me, I'm such a, a big believer in promotion uh, to get people to uh, look at your work. And, you know, a lot of the decisions that are made in the business now are made through seeing who is clicking on how much, how much people are clicking on certain things. So, you know, coverage decisions are often dictated by, all right, we're, we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of traffic uh, on, uh, on this particular topic or team and maybe less or so uh, for something else. So I, I think decisions are often made based on the, uh, the digital output, even though, you know, people are still reading the paper, but you just, it's, it's hard to, Hard to know uh, who's reading who's reading what in the newspaper. Um, but, but as far as getting back to the promotion, like I'll uh, post uh, maybe a comment from a coach in my story, and uh, and then you know put a link uh, a link to my story with it, and I'll do it on, on my four social media places, which is Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram. And you're, you're trying to build up a, a following and you're also trying to get, you know, business for your, your employer as well. So I think, uh, I think that's very important. Um, in, at this particular stop, I have not had to do video at where I was before um, at uh, Gannett. I did have to put together a lot of video pieces along uh, with my, um, you know, print pieces. Well, video is uh, a great opportunity. It's a, it can be a bit challenging from a production point of view because uh, 
you're not using the same equipment that uh, the TV networks are are using to uh, to edit and and uh, and uh, to uh, present material. Uh, but sometimes you can do things really quick and get it out to the public very quick. What are some of the ways you find that you're distributing digital uh, video uh, today? Well, you know, I would. Uh, I remember when I when I was doing a lot of video uh, packages, I would just have like an iPhone, and you're editing on the iPhone, and uh, you can insert. Uh, you know, people's names on there, like you were doing a, a TV report. Uh, it's not, maybe not quite the same quality, but uh, you know, that that's, you know, a lot of, a lot of things are done, done simply now and everything needs to be done quickly. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's the main thing, uh, you know, with digital for now more, it's, it's kind of the, uh, the distribution of my story link at different, at different places just to try to get, you know, you know, try to get people to read it. Very good. What have been uh, uh, some of the topics that you have uh, seen happening, high school and college, certainly the uh, reopening uh, for colleges. It's been the, uh, uh, the impact of the fifth year seniors, who, the players who were given an extra year to play, uh, name, image, and likeness uh, uh, that athletes at the college level can now earn uh, income from uh, has changed. Um, and uh, what have been some of the topics that, that you've seen in your high school and college uh, uh, reporting this year? Well, I haven't seen the uh, name, image, and likeness uh, at the high school ranks yet, although I would not rule that out at, at, in certain certain places. I, I, I could see that happening with just maybe a few of the better players. Um, I believe at St. John's, a couple of players, uh, of basketball players already have kind of an endorsement deal. I think one had some uh, trading card thing that he has going. Um, I actually kind of think it's a good thing. I mean, in college sports, the revenue uh, stream was, you know, so one-sided. I mean, just billions flowing in from TV money, it still is. Um, to, to the conferences and, and the colleges, and you know, it's 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 probably okay that the you know that the kids get a share of that. You're, uh, I think the NCAA had no choice really as the as the court cases were going forward, just that they had to, you know, let let this go. Um, and you're you're hopeful that it doesn't become uh, in a, in a, an abusive situation. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, flaunting flaunting rules. And, um, but, you know, I, I think it is a, a good thing that name, image, and likeness for, you know, uh, you know th these better players that are, op are open to it and, and there's interest in the community for them to sponsor something. You know, that's, that's not the worst thing. Yeah, we've, you know, it was a big topic uh, over the summer when uh, the legislation was passed and the NCAA uh, uh, decided to, that they would just simply uh, punt on opposing it and, and fully comply. Uh, there really aren't rules established uh, other than uh, that uh, the colleges uh, generally have to approve what the players are, are doing, but in, in many, many cases, they seem to want to encourage the players as another reason for uh, being at their school that they will support uh, uh, their earnings uh, uh, where appropriate. Uh, so something to watch. Um, just uh, we're getting towards the... Uh, end of the uh, college football season. Um, uh, Stony Brooks had a good year who you cover for them. Uh, if they lost three in a row, uh, it's one six straight. Army just had a huge win over Air Force to win, to go five and three. Uh, and it, what have been some of the thoughts on the college football that you've uh, been following and covering? Well, it's been, it's been mostly um... Uh, Stony, Stony Brook football, they got off to uh, a slow start. They're one and five. I think, you know, they were, they were losing, you know, close games a lot of the time where it came down to, all right, if we make this fourth down in the last minute, we're going to win. But if you leave it to that, you don't make it. You're up the creek there. So uh, it, it wasn't working out. They also played Oregon, which is a yeah. pretty good team on the road. 
And, uh, you know, I, it was only a 10 point game at, at, at halftime, actually. And then it, it got, got away from them. Uh, but, you know, lately, um, I, I think the team never lost confidence. That was that was one thing. And they've won three in a row. They um, they beat uh, Delaware and they beat Richmond and they beat uh, Maine on the road. So they're um, one under 500. They have two games left. But one of them, the next one, is at Villanova, which is a very good team, and it's a, it's a, you know it's a road game. So I'm sure they're hoping. All right, we win these last two, and uh, maybe we'll sneak into the uh, uh, FCS playoffs at, at six and five. But uh, you know we'll we'll see we'll see. And then they have a very good uh, running back, uh, Tyson uh, Lawton, who leads the uh, uh, CAA in rushing, and their their quarterback who uh, went to Stepanak, Tyco Fields. Uh, he's a grad student. He, he's, uh, you know, he, he's he's adequate at quarterback. So I mean, they they have uh, and they have good receivers. So um, you know, they they have a chance to, to to finish well, and that that's important. That's important. It's better better than one in five. Yeah, and then we have uh, college basketball just started up uh, this week. I was at the Iona game. Uh, they played good defense in the second half to get a twelve point win over. Appalachian State, they're, they're going to have Harvard and Hofstra coming in uh, for home games over the next week. Uh, uh, what are you looking at? What are, what are some of the things that stand out for college basketball season this year? I think in, in the general, you know, metropolitan area, I think St. John's is going to be pretty good. So uh, they got uh, uh, two really good players coming back and they, they brought in a lot of talent. So I um, and Mike Anderson, I think, is uh, you know is a pretty good coach. I don't believe he's ever had a losing season as a head coach in, in college basketball. So they they had their best year, their best finish, I think, since two thousand last season mm. um, when I believe they were fourth in the conference. So uh, you know, I think I, I think they're ascending. Um, I got I got I got to add one other factor at St. John's is okay. uh, their new college president. Uh, Father Brian Shanley was uh, came over. He was a president at Providence College for 15 years and did a remarkable job there. And he was really the architect of the new Big East. Uh, he was very hands-on in uh, creating the new, um, uh, basically a Catholic school-oriented league with a couple of exceptions and, uh, and keeping the, the Madison Square Garden tournament uh, location and, and getting the name. And uh, uh, it doesn't hurt your team when your college president's going to be at every game. Yeah, yeah. No, you you want you want that administration support. <laughs> that, that that's for sure. And I, I think people are uh, would love to. Uh, St. John's fans would love to go back to the days when the, when they were really good, um, and maybe they're on their way to that again. I mean, it's. I mean, we'll have to see, but. Uh, um, I, you know, I think that I think they're they're building a good base, put it that way. Um, with Hofstra, you know, Speedy Claxton, one of their all-time great players, has taken over as coach. Um, you know, they've brought in uh, some some new people. They have Jalen Ray back, guard, grad student, who's very good. So I would look for them to be improved. Stony Brook should be improved as well. I think they have a really good coach in Geno Ford. They brought in a lot of transfer scoring. Um, they did were not good in their opener at George Mason, uh, but I think they have so many new parts that maybe they need a little chemistry lesson uh, to get it together. Um, but uh, and they have uh, they brought back uh, well he he brought himself back Elijah Alani. Um, he was at Stony Brook. He was a really good player there. He transferred to Miami. He wasn't bad at the University of Miami. Then he transferred back uh, for this this season. Uh, hoping to go with a championship, and they were picked to, to finish first um, in the America East. So, um, I, uh, you know, while they have a challenging non-conference schedule, and I, I'm going to predict that they're going to lose their next game because they're playing at Kansas, uh, but uh, uh, probably good experience for uh, for the conference season. I, I think they sh they should be pretty good. Well, it it seems like there's a lot of good uh, college basketball in the New York metropolitan area. Seton Hall should be strong. Uh, Fordham has a new coach this year, uh, and we we were chatting with uh, Coach Rick Pitino at Iona last night, and uh, boy, you, I'll tell you, you ask him about offense from a player, and he'll say, we're working on his defense. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about defense with Coach Pitino, and uh, 
they are they are looking to do some big things uh, uh, there at Iona, um, and it's going to be fun to watch. Brian, I thought uh, final topic you mentioned you've been doing some work uh, in with the NHL with the Islanders. Um, uh, just did something for Hockey News, and they have their new arena opening up. And just, you know, I, I'm not sure how much time you've spent with Lou Lamorello, but we knew him very well from Providence. We followed, you know, we did a lot from an alumni point of view when he was with the Devils. We'd have outings there almost every year. Uh, and he just made the Islanders into a, a first-class franchise. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts about the Islanders and any – of the impact you've seen from uh, from uh, Lou Lamorello, well, he's had a he's had a gigantic impact. He and, and Barry Trotz, as coach, they've come in in this era, and um, you know they, they've kind of turned turned the the franchise around again, where they are, you know, a Stanley Cup contender. You have to you have to say that. Uh, I mean, they, it's not like an overwhelming uh, uh, juggernaut, but they play their system. They're very disciplined. And uh, they went to the final four, really, for the last uh, couple of seasons. Uh, so they're, they, you know, they're close. Uh, they're close, and uh, you know, it's hard to hard to really say anything negative about what the two of them have done and just kind of shaping the franchise into, a, you know, a very competitive uh, situation. And, you know, they've started out this season, they're on a 13 game road trip, which is not all a road trip because, you know, it's spread out. They've had time to, to, to come home at times, but it's still, it's still tough. But, uh, you know, they were off to out of 13 games, they're five, three and two. And really it's just keep your head above water. And then you're going to have a lot of home games and you have a, what uh, I've not been inside yet uh, at UBS arena at Belmont park. I've driven by the outside plenty of times. Uh, um, I actually covered this last Belmont Stakes horse race, so I saw the outside uh, from uh, up close. Uh, but uh, I'm assuming that the inside, from what I hear, is going to be uh, very nice for fans. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it kind of solidifies things for the franchise and maybe it becomes more attractive for uh, when there aren't salary cap issues for free agents to, to come to, to the Islanders. Um, and they're not going to be kind of this uh, nomadic franchise going from Barclays Center to Nassau Coliseum uh, and, and all that. So I, I, I think the, uh, the arrow is pointing upwards, I think, for the Islanders. What I did for the Hockey News was a, a, a project on writing about a little bit on some of their best teams um, and their best players in, in franchise uh, history. So that's, uh, that's, that's just out um, in the magazine and there's, it's their 75th anniversary uh, you know, of the magazine. So uh, they, they have the top 75 players and teams of all, all time in there. Uh, it's kind of interesting going, going, going through a kind of a, a history lesson there. Um, so, so that was, that was fun to do. Yeah. I remember so well, those great Islander teams of, uh, the uh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, dominated the NHL uh, under Bill Torrey. And uh, uh, so uh, that's neat. We'll look forward to seeing the U UBS uh, arena open up. Uh, uh, there's going to be some college basketball over there. And Brian Heyman, so good to talk with you. Do you have a final thought for us today? Well, I, uh, you know, I... I... Uh, as the, the the winter season, as the, the fall season, uh, you know, winds down, you really look forward to the, the winter season picking up and, you know, looking looking forward to, uh, you know, kind of get, getting into uh, college basketball. And, and even uh, high school basketball is great on Long Island, too. So uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing a, a lot of that as well as in my in my work role at, uh, at Newsday. Hey, that's great. And uh, Brian Ham, always good to uh, chat with you and hear what you're covering. Uh, uh, out on Long Island, all around the metropolitan area, all levels, high school, college, and and professional. Uh, always good to uh, see you. We'll look forward to reading your stories uh, in Newsday uh, over the winter. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Pleasure, pleasure to be on with you. Our pleasure. Good to talk with you. And this is Ken Kreitzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. You have a good day. Take care.